Okay, let me give you a walkthrough of the week five simulation. And this is like a minimum solution to it. Uh, so what you'll see here, I've got to have the same template that I'd given before to the entire class. But let me walk you through line by line what's happening in each of these. Um, so let's start first off with your questions about the wrapper function. The wrapper function is down here, this uh, core simulation. This would be the wrapper function. Think of that as like a function on the outside and it's gonna call all the individual pieces together. So it's kind of like a wrapper. It wraps around the outside of the other activity that's happening inside of it. So let's start with this wrapper function because this last line, uh, line right here on 45 where you're executing it, it's basically calling the wrapper function. Then in turn, the wrapper function is in turn calling the rest of the functions which are above it. So um, starting with this, let me just talk about the core simulation. So first thing it's going to do is it falls into this function. I'm not taking any parameters, so it's as simple as possible as you could make it. Um, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to print off a statement saying uh, simulation is starting. So I want to have the marker for when it's starting. And when this function is done, you'll notice that on the return, I'm going to return out simulation complete. So when you execute this, at a minimum, it's going to say the simulation is starting and that the simulation is complete. That gives you the two markers for the activity that happens in between. So the first thing which we're going to do is we're going to initialize those variables. Now in this particular case, I want to count the number of buses. Uh, so what's the active bus count that I've got? I want the total bus count, how many total that I go through. And I also want to have a timer start and a timer stop. I want to know how long it took to run this simulation. So this is again, bare bones simulation. These are three variables which I'm going to initialize. Now I am using a call to sys.time. That's a function that's available inside of R that allows you to kind of record the current time. So it's gonna capture the current time as a start time, run the simulation, and then the last thing you're gonna see is it records the difference between that start time and the, the end time of the function. So all of that should look very familiar. This is just simply storing some variables and I'm initializing them at zero because I wanna start with no. So there's no buses, there's no data coming into it at this point. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop down into this for loop right here. And so I is just simply an iteration counter. So it's gonna say basically for I in one to 100, I'm gonna run this 100 times. I'm gonna run this loop 100 times. Um, you could have had this as a variable that you pass in. So if you were gonna do that, you'd put the variable right here on the function call, and then you could set like how many times you wanted to iterate through. Um, but again, keeping it simple, just go ahead and throw it into a for next loop. And so the for loop right here, and you'll watch the curly braces of where it ends, that's the for loop. So what happens inside of that for loop? Well, we have an if else statement that's going on in there. So the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna evaluate this, uh, see whether this is true. If that's not true, then it'll go to the else. So um, within that if then else, what I'm doing is I'm doing a sampling so I'm sampling one, va one value, and we've done sample on other, other examples, but I'm doing a, a one value between one and 100. So that sample one colon 100 says between one and 100, give me one value. Then I'm gonna check to see if that value is greater than 50, okay? So I'm saying roughly half of the data that's coming through, it's just doing a random sample. Half the time I wanna add a bus, half the time I wanna take a bus away. And so by doing this, if I said, okay, it's, a, it's greater than 50, then I'm gonna think that that's a true uh, aspect. And so then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to call this function called add bus. I'm gonna pass sim data, which is my, again, my active bus counter. I'm gonna pass that to add bus, and then I'm gonna record that back into sim data. So I'm basically incrementing sim data with the add bus function. Um, I'm also incrementing, just using a manual incrementer here, I'm incrementing the total number of buses. So that'll be like a cumulative total. Now you could use a cum sum. There's several different ways that you could do this too, but again, just for simplicity's sake, I'm keeping it just by simply doing an add plus one on the total bus. So if it's an add, it's gonna call that function add bus, and then it's gonna go ahead and uh, increment that total counter. Now, if it's not, then it's gonna turn around and it's gonna remove a bus. So this little simulation is just basically either adding a bus or removing a bus, adding a bus or removing a bus. 
Then the final thing it's going to do is it's going to print the results. And I'm taking three parameters here. Sim data, if you remember, that's your active bus counter. Total bus, that's the total number of buses which have been through this. And the start time. And these are simply just to print out the results. And then at the end, it's going to return that the simulation is complete. So that in itself is the wrapper function. It's calling these other functions above it. So hopefully that that makes sense. Let's go up to the individual functions now. So again, these are as simple as you possibly could make it. Add bus. It's going to take sim data in, uh, as a parameter on all of these. Sim data, again, remember, is your active bus counter. So first thing it's going to do is it's saying, I'm adding a bus. It's going to go ahead and it's going to print that off. And that's what you see happening here. It's going to say adding a bus. It's going to print off the number of the bus that you're adding. So you're adding one bus each time. And then in the return statement, it's going to go ahead and just return that sim data plus one. Now, if I didn't even want to put a, a message out there about it that's adding a bus, I could completely skip that and then just simply use the one statement for the return of the sim data plus one. And that'll have that same, um, same type of uh, response to it. It'll still continue to increment the bus. Remove bus, that's just about the opposite. Now with remove bus, I put in this additional if statement here, saying that if that bus counter is greater than one, or greater than zero, so at least you know that there is a bus. If it's zero, then you know you don't have any bus. So if it's greater than zero, then it's going to print, hey, it's removing the bus. It's gonna print the bus, the incrementer for the bus, and then it's going to run this command here to return back um, the sim data minus one. <coughs> so in doing that, it's going to automatically decrement the SIM data, the active bus counter for you. Otherwise, it's going to print off that there is no bus waiting, and then it's going to simply return that SIM data back out. So this thing's just going to continue to go through. As long as it has a bus in the queue, it can, it can remove something. If you don't have that check in it, and that's, again, part of what I sent over is the template to see who would catch it. Um, and many students who submitted just the template back they submitted that, uh, that error in it too as well. So they submit that back and um, it'll have negative buses. That's an indication that you didn't actually go through the script and, and um, you know, you know, do your work on this one. That's the remove bus function. Print, bu print results is basically taking in those three variables and then simply running prints. So it's gonna print the ending bus count. It's gonna print the total bus count. It's gonna print the elapsed time. So here's where it's doing that calculation the system time minus the start time. When you take the difference between the two of those, it'll tell you how long it was in milliseconds. That is the entire function. And this is, again, as simple as you could possibly make that particular assignment. So let me go ahead and run it and just show you right here what an execution looks like. Okay, so here we see that the simulation is starting. It adds a bus, it removes a bus. The next time, Oh, there's no bus waiting. So it tried to remove the bus twice. Then it tries to add another bus. Yep, there's no bus. I can add a bus. And then it tries to remove a bus. Yep, I can remove a bus. Then it has, again, a count of zero. No bus is waiting. No bus is waiting. So it tries to do two deletes. Which again, just using those random samples, it's going to come up with things where it's going to try to remove a bus. There's no way we can remove a bus, so it goes on. Then it adds a bus, and you can see it'll continue to go. Eventually, we start adding a number of buses all at one time. When we do that, then it'll start, when it starts to remove buses, you'll see it'll step backwards. So it can step up, it can step down. It's got the safety catch to make sure that you don't have a, a, a zero count for those buses. And when we get done at the end of this, it's removing a bus, and it ends up having an ending bus count of nine. It has a total number of buses that have gone through this process, of 53, and the elapsed time is 0.01 milliseconds. So again, very, very, very quick. Let's go ahead and adjust the parameter here. And let's run 10,000 iterations of that same, uh, that same function. So if I do that, let me clear the decks. And now that time it made it through 10,000 in 0 0.5, 0 0.6 milliseconds. And it had actually ran through 5,000 buses. Uh, ending bus count was 26. And then let's say if we wanted to go uh, again, get it a little bit more ridiculous and bump it up again. Clear the decks. And 
And you can see now it's really going nuts on the number of buses. And there it took five to five seconds to uh, complete that execution. It had gone through almost 50,000 buses in the five seconds using that simple little routine. So uh, again, when we talk simulations, think of it as what's going to be the simplest way to answer that question. So um, this week, we're going to be, uh, week six, they're going to be talking about um, a farming simulation. So a farming simulation, you could do very similar to this, um, although that's going to be based on classes. So uh, within the class, you could have things to add crops, you could have things to remove crops, but then you would take these, these individual functions, and you would encase those in classes. So don't want to get you confused on that. Um, this should answer the questions which I believe you had about wrappers and the basic simulation, the walkthrough. If you still have questions on this, we can definitely cover that tomorrow. Have a good one.